Good morning everyone. A uh, lovely sun today. <laughs> a blue-ish sky. And uh, David, how lovely. And bees and berries. And look at the colour of those leaves. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it, today? Um, I'm up at Orsley Park. Uh, my mum said to me, mothers often say very wise things, um, Rose, I think you should do one walk out in the open and the other in the woods. Because if it's sunlight you need, uh, you're not going to get much of it under a canopy of trees. Here's the uh, stone dove cut, isn't it beautiful? It's not in use anymore, what a shame. Lovely piece of work, isn't it? And this is so old round here. It's probably been there forever. Well, maybe not completely. All right, let's do the time. It is. 9.28 and it's only Tuesday today it feels like it should be a Thursday to me whatever a Thursday feels like well obviously it feels like this so Orsley Park and uh, yesterday oh my goodness <laughs> all the hoo-ha over the storm and I'm not saying there weren't terrible things that happened you know a child was swept away to see a teenager um, people honey come on good girl did she just go to the loo I don't think so. oh that's okay come on then come on honey um you know there was there was lots going on but the thing that amazed me and the reason I knew it wasn't as bad as they said it was going to be was because uh, they kept putting up the old film from 1987 and you'd see roofs getting ripped off and caravans getting hurtling into uh... oh these are all prickly lovely um, caravans hurtling into the sea and everything um, and they would keep showing the same pictures of the same cars with trees over them. Um, and I had heard that a lot of people, when they know there's a storm coming, actually uh, park their car under trees that they know are weak uh, to get the insurance. Um, but I figured here would be a very, very good place to come and see if there were dramatic effects here because we have lots of very old trees with extremely long limbs. We're on a hill and we are, um, it's a flat-ish uh, piece of land. And this is the path uh, through the South uh, Midlands, Warwickshire way, that the storm was supposed to have passed. Although I've seen all kinds of different trajectories of where it went. Anyway. It's nice here. Isn't it trees? Yes. Can you see the light going through them? Let's get as close as we can. See, I often really feel it's... I'm seeing these amazing things and these amazing colours. And uh, I just kind of point my camera and go, oh, look at that. Probably most of the time you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, right, I want to say thank you to a few people. Um, they're all the usual suspects. But Desire for Liberation left a beautiful uh, piece of written work in my comments about love um, on my video, those three little words. I uh, thank you so much for that. It, he kind of said in a couple of paragraphs what I rambled on about for, I don't know, was it 20 minutes? Um, but it's good to know that someone has the ability 
to kind of put it all into prose and the true ray also um commented uh, as did sunshine uh, so you know all of these lovely people um and then christine hansen um sent me a lovely link to a song I, i've never heard of the singer i've never heard of the song before but i played it and uh it really really resonated with me so that's on uh, i don't think that's on those three little words i think that might be on uh hey jude video uh and i have been spending so much time researching hormone d and what i'm finding out is really horrifying it's it's i mean obviously the people who were doing the uh removal of the sun's energy directly to us um and the makers of sunscreen and all of these other things uh you know ultimately know what it will lead to um and lack of hormone d has recently been researched um by people who are not um from shall we say the uh old school thai form of medicine um and i'm still researching this and it, you know it is fascinating me absolutely fascinating me because what a clever way really to murder people it's it's just uh sensational because really the effects are different in different people um so there'll be a whole group of people who will have uh problems with their their brain their memory and things like this and then there will be others where it affects uh things like diabetes uh type 1 diabetes there will be others where it will affect their balance um mental do you know it covers the whole gambit i just can't believe it um and of course with the increase in in sunscreen and parents being paranoid about their children getting sun on their body anywhere um we now have these children where it's not as plain as rickets do you see what i mean it's getting other um they're showing other symptoms first and often those symptoms can be things that lead oh that was amazing that actually lead to that person's um or oh, the breakdown of their physical and mental and emotional well-being. Uh yeah, it's it's been unbelievable what's out there that we can find to actually uh understand what's going on with the whole vitamin D thing, hormone D. So, I think that's going to be something I might have to sit down at a computer to do. but i have been talking to this about this with numerous people um friends you know family and uh talking about uh, the tiredness people feel you know this is one of the things and and it all makes perfect sense because imagine we turn back the clock several thousand years and we are um living as animals would live on this planet um we would wake with the sunrise probably just before like most birds like most animals that aren't nocturnal um we would wake with the sunrise we would do work uh work in it in sort of inverted commas but gathering or cleaning or whatever during those uh 
first few hours of um, sun and then we would go and take shelter get ourselves out of the sun during the midday heat and then again we would rest we would recuperate at that time and then we would keep going again until uh, the sun went down and then like the birds that I so often video at sunset we would give our thanks and uh, rest somewhere safe warm and secure um, and obviously that would be seasonal as well so during the summer months we would have more energy we would do more things um, we would spend more time on activities the days would be longer we would get loads of vitamin D hormone D through the Sun but not when it's at its most harmful when we have harmful rays although I'm even kind of thinking and debating about those guys um, and then we would come out again and uh, as the the intense power of the Sun moved exactly as other animals do um, and during the winter or as the days got shorter so would our days so would our energy levels you know many animals actually go into hibernation um, to uh, you know conserve their energy and we would do the same um, but now you know, our children, they don't go out into the sun. And when they do, they're covered up from head to toe. We are covered up from head to toe. Um, and we don't allow the sun to actually penetrate our bodies at all, really. And we see it as one of the great evils of our time. The sun, home once upon a time, not so very long ago, it would have been worshipped and we would have uh, thanked it so, so much for the energy, the power, the bliss and the happiness and, and th the food and the fruit and, you know, uh, now we see it as a uh, big culprit number, number one. And I wonder if this is a shift as well because David Icke explains this very, very well. He calls it the totalitarian tiptoe. And he says, you know, if they want to do something, they're not going to jump out and, and do it that day. They kind of sneak, like creep, 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 creep. Um, and do it a little at a time. And we used to play a game like that when we were children. One of us would stand against the wall with our eyes closed and then the others come on let's go this way and then uh, the rest of us would kind of uh, try and creep up and touch them on the back without them seeing us and we'd have to kind of take a few steps and then stop dead like that when they turned around and then as they looked put their back to the wall again we'd creep up and I forget what it was called, but I used to have great fun playing that game. Well, that's the totalitarian tiptoe. And my generation will soon be gone. And what will remain is this uh, generation who see the sun as almost evil. Almost like a dangerous presence around. Cover yourself up, wear a hat wear sunglasses, invariably great big ones that cover half of your face. Uh, you know, put on a long sleeve t-shirt, um, wear shorts but have a pair of tights underneath and put something on your feet. W what part of you is actually left to um, absorb that wonderful hormone D? And I think this is something. It, it is the greatest murder weapon of all. It really is because it's taking the most vital energy source that affects our health and our well-being, our food supply, in ways we haven't even yet understood. And uh, they're making it evil. 
It's crazy, guys. Totally crazy. Yep, yep, yep. But it's the way that they have to do it in this kind of creepy way so that they, they know they're not going to do it in one generation. It's going to take a couple of generations. And what they do is they provide uh, the illness in the removal of the sun's energy. They provide the illness in cancer and MS and all of these other things that lack of hormone D actually promote um, and they say to us that it's the sun that's creating us when in fact it's the, res the reverse but this is so true of the they people you know if they say it's good for you invariably it's bad if they say it's bad for you most times I would say that it's good um, so it all makes sense about the chemtrails it makes sense about our food being fairly crap. Um, and then when they can manipulate the weather as well, we see the sun as something that causes drought, that causes um, insects and mosquitoes and our food to go off. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I think I've talked enough and uh, it's time for me to go so uh, keep looking up guys because there is a sun there and it is vitally important seriously vitally vitally important um, I can't stop reading stuff about it because it's just so interesting seriously and such a good way to kill uh, seven and a half billion people and end up with your um, tally that the they people want, which is their 500 million. Yep, yep, yep. So, from the beautiful Orsley Park, we have main roads here, so it's uh, it gets quite noisy. The amazing colours in the, the leaves, it's just totally beautiful. Um, and start to think about people that you know that have these illnesses. Depression is one of the first things you should measure for depression is vitamin D levels. Does your doctor do it? I guess not. I guess they just hand you the Tamazepam or the Valium or the, oh, any one of a number of brands. Um, Yes, honestly guys, and the other thing I read which, you know, really shocked me and then didn't was that the people suffering from SAD, um, which is that seasonal something disorder, and they actually give it a name when it's them bastards that are doing it, um, has increased something like 6,000 fold. It's amazing, isn't it? And they say that that is about lack of sunlight and it causes people to be depressed and then they block it out as often as they can. Uh, it does sound a bit like a conspiracy, doesn't it? But uh, who knows? And we have a robin here or a bird that is trying to uh, sing its little heart out and say, look, focus on the nice stuff, Rose. Focus on the beautiful, um, because we all love you. So, from my gorgeous, beautiful, rah rah son, Honey and Abby, and my feet, and the lovely, lovely Orsley Park. Uh, it's good. Goodbye. Have a fantastic day, and uh, remember keep looking up there is a beautiful sun up there and remember to enjoy life live it it's exactly why we're here even if the they people are trying to make you believe something totally different bye the sky's almost blue guys
my goodness, maybe that uh, storm or whatever it is took out all the chemtrailers. Wouldn't that be magical? Love you. Bye. Mwah.